recording. Okay. So tonight's session, like I said, basic navigation, we're looking at basic course to steer, and this is building on the previous session of doing estimated positions that we did on Tuesday night. Um, and tonight what we're going to take a look at is a very quick revision of the DRs and EPs. Um, like I say, if you haven't seen that one already, that one will be up on our YouTube channel. Quick reminder of how you convert your compass bearings to magnetic bearings and to true bearings. Um, how you go about plotting a course to steer, including adding a leeway in there as well. Calculating an estimated time of arrival. So the whole point is how long will it take us to get to a particular waypoint? And we'll also have a look at the 1 in 60 rule as well. I'm going to do some slides. I'm also going to do some... Um, um, using the chart plotter, the RYA chart plotter as well. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Kat Scott, I'm the Chief Instructor here at Compass Sea School. Um, <clears throat> I've been boating most of my adult life, sailboating, uh, motorboating and ribs as well. I'm also a lifeboat trainer assessor here on the boat here at RNLI Portis Head. Um, so I spend quite a lot of my time teaching this both in the classroom and also afloat on a variety of craft. So we're going to start with a very quick revision of what we did on Tuesday. Okay, so this is where we had our estimated position. We always fix our position. So whether we're doing a course to steer or whether we're doing an EP, we're always going to fix our position. We start with our fix. In this instance, we're going to say, well, we would draw our water track that way. So for an estimated position, remember you are recording what happened to you. So if we think we sailed on this heading, let's say let's make it simple and keep it for one hour. We think we sailed on this heading for an hour. The wind has actually blown us up the screen. So <clears throat> if we're going to draw the line on the chart, we will draw our water track a little bit further up taking into account our leeway, okay? So for an estimated position, we apply the leeway at the beginning when we draw our water track onto the chart. We would then apply our leeway, there we go, here, here you've got your true heading is 80. Because it's pushing you up, let's say we subtracted five, the water track we actually draw is only 75 degrees true. We only draw the one line, we wouldn't draw this dotted line, that's just to give you an idea of where we would have started. We then set our tidal set and drift on the end of it. So we go to our almanac, we work out the correct tide, we work out the correct day, the correct hour, and so on and so forth, and take that from our tidal atlas or our tidal diamonds. And we pop our tidal set and drift onto the end of our dead reckoning. So this is our water track, one arrow for water, three arrows for tide, and therefore our EP one hour later would be around this triangle here, okay? This is an estimated position. Obviously the tide doesn't always do what you expect it to do. The wind isn't, isn't, the wind isn't as constant. So actually you're looking at estimating your position in this location. So effectively your ground track would have gone from the fix here. Your boat would have sailed along that yellow line there, which is our ground track two feet on the ground, okay? So that's our very basic EPs. If we wanted to do a projected EP, this is where we want to project where we will end up if we sail on a particular heading, particularly useful for you sailors if you are looking at being able to uh, beat to windward perhaps and say the, the best course that I can make is this. So I would put my water track on, I set my tidal set and drift, <clears throat> and in this instance I would say, and therefore I would end up over here, okay? Um, my ground track, so the, the boat actually goes down this yellow line here, which is my ground track. Why is that useful? Well, let's say we were trying to avoid an area or we were trying to go across a TSS where we want our heading at 90 degrees. In this instance, although we would plot our water track here, we never really go there. We go down our ground track, which means that we would go north of this sandbank, okay? We've got a sandbank with two cardinals on the end there. What I can do is also calculate, say, what time I would past the sandbank so I can do my ETA using my speed distance time calcs, the distance to waypoint, um, divided by my speed over ground. In this case, the distance to waypoint would be going from here to here. So that would be the red line. And my speed over ground would be measured from here to here. So the red line is my distance to waypoint. The, the blue line here is my speed over ground. And the idea being that um, my speed over ground is taking into account both my boat speed and also my tide, okay? So in this instance, let's say we've made some numbers up, let's say it was four and three quarter miles to our, our distance to waypoint, divided by seven and a half for our speed over ground, times 60 minutes would give us 38 minutes. What that does, can we look at that without doing the calculations? Yeah, we're about two thirds of the way down the line, so 38 minutes is a good answer, okay? So that's a quick, uh, quick revision of what we did 
Let me just remove my lines. We also talked about going from a compass bearing to a true bearing, where we would add east. So cadet is the word that we use to remember it. Obviously, if we want to go from a true bearing round to a compass bearing, we're going to do the opposite. And we have our magnetic bearings in the middle, where we would apply deviation between compass and magnetic and variation between magnetic and true. OK, so they were the, the sessions. That's a very quick, quick resume of what we did on Tuesday. OK, so here we are. This is our course to steer. OK, so why is it important? Well, if I'm in my little rowboat here, and I want to get across to the other side of the river. Let's say I was going for a nice cold glass of Prosecco in the pub. I want to be able to go straight there. What I don't want to do is row across the river and end up somewhere down here where the tide might push me or up here. So in this instance, we've got a wiggly tide here that's pushing us down. So if I was just to set off in a straight line, my boat would actually just start to drift all the way down. Couple that with a wind perhaps, and it's going to get even worse. So how do I get my boat from one side of the river to the other side of the river going directly there? Because that's what I'm really interested in, okay? I need to know how far up tide and upwind I am going to angle my boat. I need to do the calculations for my tidal vector to say how far would it push me? Let's say, let's keep it simple, let's do one hour. So I need to apply my tidal vector and any wind at the beginning. I apply it at the beginning so that when I finally row my way across towards the pub to go and get my lovely glass of Prosecco, I actually end up outside the pub on a mooring rather than halfway down here and having to walk back. OK, so keep this picture in mind whilst we take a look at it on here. OK, so we've also got a little magnetic at the um, composition at east at the top there. So this is what we look at. Here is our fix, okay? This is the one side of the river. We want to go to the other side of the river. So effectively, we now draw our ground track. We draw our ground track all the way across. This is our waypoint that we want to get to. Remember, waypoints are squares. We draw it to our waypoint and beyond, okay? So when I'm teaching in the classroom, I always say it's a bit like, is it Buzz Lightyear? Off to infinity and beyond, okay? Don't just draw it up to your actual waypoint because when you see the mat, they might go beyond it, okay? Our ground track, two feet on the ground. This is where we want our boat to go. Doesn't matter which way it's pointing, this is where we want the boat to go. So what I said was we apply our tide and our wind to start with. So let's put our tide on here okay so if we do nothing the tide is going to push us down the river okay remember the tide was coming this way so the tide is going to push us down the river and as long as i use the same units if this is roughly an hour so let's say the distance to the pub is about i don't know five and a half miles and i'm going to make six knots so i'm doing it for roughly one hour okay so i'm going to do one full hour of tide and then the most important thing is I'm going to draw my boat speed and I'm going to join it from the end of my tide. But what I'm going to do is measure my boat speed. So let's say six knots. I'm going to measure my boat speed. Let me just grab a line here. I'm going to measure my boat speed all the way from the end and I'm going to make it six knots long. So let's say that arrow is now six knots long. OK, what I want to do with the arrow, if I select it, is I actually want to, I have to draw, there we go. Let me pull it down. I actually want to see where the arrow crosses the line. So I take my dividers, I put one end of my dividers on the end of the tide, and I set them to my boat speed and I see where it crosses the line, okay? So effectively, what I end up with is my water track and that's my boat speed. So if I set my dividers at say six knots, so six miles, I measure from the end of my tide. Don't try and join it to your waypoint. That defeats the entire object of this triangle because currently this is a one hour of tide and a one hour of boat speed. So in one hour, I will end up here. All it means is I stop before the hour is up, okay? So how am I going to work up my course to steer? Because effectively now this water track here is my course to steer. So I take my plotter, I get my nice plotter here. Okay, I put my plotter onto the chart and I measure the angle of that water track. Okay, so in this instance, I'm going to have measured the angle of the water track because it's on my chart. It's going to be in true. I've chosen variation and deviation. They're kind of the 
the, the numbers are irrelevant from this perspective, they're just for the calculations today. So if I start with 100 degrees true, I have to apply my variation. So I'm going from true round to compass. So I'm subtracting east or adding west. So in this case, I'm going to then work out my magnetic and I'm going to work out my compass. So I give you a minute or so just for you to work out what you think your magnetic heading would be and what you think your compass heading would be before I give you a grand reveal. If you want to pop it in the chat, if you're quick enough, then feel free. Okay, so we've got a couple of answers coming in. So just keep the maths nice and simple. Remember you're going this way around from true to compass. So we're going to add any westerly variations. Okay, so we've got some different answers coming in. Sorry, both west, 110, yeah, 104. Okay, so there we go. Put you out in your misery. So here we have true going around plus seven degrees west gives you 107 degrees magnetic, which would be great if we were sailing on a hand bearing compass. But what we want to do is to shout up to our helmsman from the navigator station. Actually, if we add the deviation as well, we can now sail on the boat compass, which gives us 110 degrees compass. OK, so there is a big difference. There's a 10 degree difference in this particular example between your true heading and your compass heading. And if you were going a particularly long way, that would make a very big difference. OK, so this is thinking of it just using tide. Let's say it's not a particularly windy day. OK, we also on our riverbed, if you remember, we also had a wind and our wind was a southerly wind. So have you think, what is our wind going to do to us if we take no account of it and we just sail on 110 degrees compass? We won't actually make it because the wind will constantly be pushing us up. So we need to take into account the wind, and this time the calculation is slightly different. Okay? We still draw the same triangle, okay? so that's quite important. We draw the same triangle because this is the tidal set for an hour and the boat speed for an hour, but this time our calculation gets a little bit more complicated. Okay, so we still have 100 degrees true sitting on the right hand side there. And this time, let's say we have five degrees leeway. Well, because the wind is going to push us up, it would take our course lower down the compass. So we're going to angle our boat down. So plus on the compass to take into account. So effectively, our water track will come down here. So in this instance, we're going to add our leeway on. So adding five degrees. And then when we do the calculations, you'll see that they're slightly different. So I'll give you a minute or so just to have a look at how does this calculation change, either just at home or you can pop it in the chat for me. Some new figures appearing in the chat. OK, I think you're kind of getting the hang of it. OK, so absolutely. So this time we've got 105 plus 7, which gives us 112 magnetic. And the deviation would be roughly about the same, which would give us 115 degrees magnetic. So that should be a compass on that one rather than magnetic. OK, so what you can see is we actually have a five degree difference here, not just because we had the five degrees here, because it could change the deviation. But when you're looking at doing these calculations, you're looking at applying your leeway at the beginning. So we draw it, assuming no leeway then we apply the leeway and then we work out our calculations okay <clears throat> what we also need to have a think about is how do we know how long it's going to take us well i can make a guesstimate and i can say from this particular example if this was our fix this is where we would end up in one hour so this is our speed over ground okay all the way to where our line intersects because that is the combined effect of both our tide and our boat speed so if we sailed for one hour we would end up here so we've got our speed distance time calculation again so our eta if you like our time is our distance to waypoint divided by our speed over ground so the green line here is your distance to waypoint the blue line is your speed over ground and if you put those two together times 60 minutes you would get an answer that in this case is going to be around about what 47, 48 minutes, something like that. We're more than so about halfway through here and you would be able to do that calculation. And people say, well, but what if this is on the land? It doesn't matter because we sail down this line 
heading in that direction and basically we're like we're offsetting how we sail our boat and we sail all the way up to our waypoint so in this instance our boat would be facing down the page okay so as we come along this waypoint is always going to be on our port side because our boat will be sliding along this line here but actually facing towards the bottom of the page okay so what if you have more than one hour because quite often we do go sailing for more than one hour okay we don't just do the sailing for one hour so we can plot two tidal vectors but we have to plot two hours of boat speed so you'll see on this example here maybe our destination is 12 miles away and at a boat speed of five knots that's going to take us two hours so we've plotted one tidal vector and then the next tidal vector together and then here we would arc off two hours of boat speed okay think of it as similar triangles whatever your units are you have to use the same units if it's two hours to the waypoint okay roughly two hours to the waypoint you need two hours of tide and two hours of boat speed okay but what if you wanted to go a bit further okay let's say uh we quite often take our motor cruise across the irish sea it takes us about four or five hours and there's a quite wicked tide that's pushing us up okay what you can do is add them all together okay so on this particular instance we've added one two three four five tides okay and then this line here where we put our water track on where we intersect with our ground track we would use five hours of boat speed so it's the same principle it just gets bigger okay and remember your course to steer is an approximate course to steer because it's assuming that the tide does what the tide says it's going to do for that entire hour and it assumes that the wind will do what it says it's going to do for that entire hour so as we do this passage what we would be doing is just making sure that we kept up to date with um, the monitoring and how we would plot our position and making sure that we were roughly where we were expecting to be so here's some clever trigonometry for you okay so for those of you find trigonometry on a thursday night this is all to do with the sign of a triangle but it makes it really simple if i want to work out my course correction without even drawing any lines on charts i can simply take my tide speed divided by my boat speed and times it by 60. okay so if my tide speed was two and my boat speed was five, let's say, we have a simple two times 60 gives us 120, divided by five gives us 24 degrees, okay? And that's 24 degrees up tide, okay? So without even drawing anything on our chart, we know our boat speed, we know what the tide's doing, we'd still have to calculate that, obviously. This is for a tidal stream roughly at right angles to our intended track, okay? It's a quick ready reckoner to say, in this instance, we would be sailing 24 degrees off our intended track, okay? If you want to use this when the tide's at about 45 degrees rather than at right angles, then you would use about two thirds of the tidal rate, okay? So that's an easy one to do if you're perhaps on a smaller boat where you don't have so much space to get the charts out, okay? You can just take your boat speed and your tide speed and you can come up with some clever trigonometry, okay? So let me just pause share, let me grab a new share and let me show you what it looks like. Okay, so hopefully now you can see, let me bear with me a second, new share. There we go. I'll share that up there. And I resume share. Hopefully now you can all see my um, chart plotter with some waypoint, a waypoint and a fix sitting over there, okay? So we started our fix. So let's say we sailed out of our Port Slade and we've done all our pilotage and we've got to our waypoint just outside Port Slade. And what we want to do is calculate our course to steer to get back down to St. Kilda Bay. So this is where we live, St. Kilda Marina. And what we want to do, we want to pop a waypoint. So I'm going to move the waypoint down and I'm going to say, let's work out a course to steer from our fix all the way down to a waypoint. And we'll pop the waypoint onto the 20 meter console here and just um, at the end of what would be charted as the leading lines and the lights going into St. Hilda Bay. Okay, so first up then, let me just put that over there. First up then, we're just going to draw a basic line. Okay, so I'm going to draw a basic line. And as you can see, I'm going to take the basic line. It's around about 6.67 miles to my waypoint. If 
where I'm going to go to my waypoint and I am going to go beyond. So you'll see now I've got a line drawn from my fix all the way to my waypoint and beyond. Doesn't matter if it goes through the land because we're only ever going to go to our waypoint. Okay, but we might need this bit if we end up with a big triangle. So once I've done that, then what I can say is, okay, let me put a tide on. So let's say our tide in this instance is going to push us down at around what we got 1.3 knots. So I pop my tidal vector onto my fix. Okay, remember the idea is that I work out what my tide is doing before I set off. So I need to make sure that my tide goes onto my fix as opposed to when we did EPs where the tide went at the end. Okay, so I've got this now and I need to say, well, what's my boat speed? Let's say my boat speed's going to be six and a half knots okay so i'm going to take a line here i'm going to calculate my ground track and i'm going to draw this line until it becomes uh let's have a say let's say seven let's say my boat speed seven and a half knots okay i'm going to draw it to about seven and a half long and i'm going to see where it crosses the line and it roughly crosses the line there okay so instead of joining it to the waypoint i've actually arced it off where it crosses this line here okay and this would be the point i would get to if this was a one hour calculation i would sail all the way down the line to here in one hour so i now have my course to steer on this line here which is showing us 254 degrees around about 7.5 miles okay so i would start with my 254 degrees true I would then say, okay, well, I can't ask my helmsman to steer 254 degrees true because he's steering off a compass or she's steering off a compass and I'm sat at the chart table with my lovely chart plotter. So actually what I need to do is turn that 254 degrees true into a compass heading. So I would apply the variation through to magnetic. I would apply the deviation from my deviation card through to compass and I would come up with a new heading. Let's say for argument, say it was, I don't know, 200 and 63 degrees and I would ask him to steer 263 degrees and we would set off from our fix this would become our ground try and put my water track on there let me just pop him off that should be oh that should be my water track bear with me a second there's my water track up and down to about seven and a half there we go so one hour on my water track three hours on my um tide and i would put my ground track then all the way down through to my waypoint okay uh let me have a look i've got a question here from jake what would you do if your boat speed was let's say four knots how would you hope to reach your waypoint okay well if that's the case if you've measured it and you thought it was going to come short then i might draw a two hour triangle okay um, or you can do this for half hour segments but i'd be looking at this saying if it was going to take me roughly two hours um, a boat speed of four knots the triangle would still look a little bit like this but that would be two hours of tide and that would be two hours of boat speed okay if I want to work out my ETA then, what I can do is I can measure from, let's do a line with an arc, I can measure all the way down to my waypoint, which gives me uh, 6.65 uh, miles. So that would be my distance to my waypoint. The speed over ground would be to where my water track crosses my ground track, in this case, 7.65. So I could work out, if I put my text on, I could say that my distance to waypoint here is going to be equal to, I think it's, uh, let me move it back, uh, let's say it was 6.5 miles. So I put my distance to waypoint on there. I could also pop my speed over ground as 7.65. And I would be able to do the calculation then that says if I want to work out my ETA, I would be able to do my distance to waypoint divided by my speed over ground times 60, which in this case is likely to give me an answer. Well, if I would be here in an hour, 
I'd be about here in half an hour. So I've got the spotlight on. So there's about halfway. I'm probably looking at this being around about 45, 50 minutes or so if I was to do the calculation. Okay. So the most important things to remember is if I just draw a line on, that this here is my distance to waypoint, the blue line. The red line then that I'll pop on is my speed over ground, okay? And remember the whole point of my speed over ground is it's the combination of what the tide does to me and what my boat speed is, okay? So let's take a quick look at if I just clear this off, bear with me a second. I just clear that away, get rid of these lines and leave the waypoint where it is. Let's say the tide was doing something slightly different to us, okay? So let's go get our initial line. In this case, we'll get our ground track and we'll pop it all the way through our waypoint and off to infinity and beyond, okay? And let's say this time we looked at our tidal stream and it did something like this, okay? So our tidal stream now is pushing away, so it would be pushing up, so it's heading uh, you know, due north, but it's pushing us away from it, okay? It might mean that we need to change it from one hour to two hours if we've got a really short um, distance, you know, if we've got, say, a four knot boat speed, but it's exactly the same principle. I still measure up my boat speed, so let me go get my water track. I still make this line, whatever my boat speed is. So let's say my boat speed is six and a half knots. I bring it down onto my line until it makes about six and a half miles. There we go. And this time what you can see is that the line has fallen short of the waypoint, okay? So in this case, it's going to take me more than one hour to get there, okay? Because the tide is, Head, it, the tide is heading me, it's going to push me away. So in this instance, my course to steer is gonna be 235 degrees true. Again, I would need to go through all of that calculation and say my true, I would need to apply my variation, I would then need to get to my magnetic, apply my deviation, get to my compass, and then I would be able to shout up to the helmsman, make your course, say 245 degrees compass, for at least an hour because in one hour time i am going to be here so in this instance if i was going to draw my let me grab my distance to waypoint there's my distance to waypoint on the blue line we'll measure it just a second and here is my speed over ground now which in this instance is going to be shorter than my boat speed my speed over ground is the red line and that's because the tide has pushed me away. So I've gone slower than I thought I had done, okay? If I want to work the calculation out, I just need to go get my measurer. And if I get my measurer, in this instance, I can say that my distance to waypoint is still 6.6 .6 nautical miles, but my actual speed over ground is only 5.7 nautical miles, okay? So if I just take him away, so if I put the text up then, we can have our distance to waypoint is 6.6 .6 nautical miles, and our speed over ground is going to be, what did I say, 5.6 nautical miles. Okay, so if I pop those on there, if we wanted to work out the ETA now, we're going to be doing 6.6, .6 divided by 5.6 times 60, and that's going to give us a number more than one hour, because in one hour's time, this is where we will have sailed to, okay? Given this plot and how close we would be to our waypoint, I would say it's probably not worth doing another triangle because it would be a teeny tiny triangle, okay? Because if you do the calculation of 6.6 .6 divided by 5.6 times by 60, what do we end up with? Thank you very much, Lawrence. 70 minutes, 71, okay? So in this instance, it's gonna take us an hour and 10 minutes to get there. But remember, this is all looking at roughly. This is making a big assumption that the tide does this for the whole hour, constantly, okay? Tides don't necessarily do that. And that if we had any wind, let's say we had a southerly wind now, and we wanted to angle a bit further down, that the wind was constant, okay? So we would be saying in one hour's time, we would be able to fix our position here. 
and we would have another 10 minutes to sail onto our waypoint. Okay, so just a quick recap we fix our position, we draw our ground track line, which goes all the way to our waypoint and beyond. Okay, it's okay if we end up on the land with our final calculation because we stop at the waypoint. We pop our tidal vector on. We, in this case, we've chosen one tidal vector because it's one hour. You could choose two tidal vectors, three tidal vectors, depending on how far it is from your fix to your waypoint. Okay. We then mark our, get our dividers. We dial up our boat speed. So if our boat speed was, say, six knots, we would dial up a six knots on our dividers. We put one end of our divider on the end of our tidal vector, and we see where that crosses our ground track and we mark it there we don't just join the dots all the way to our waypoint okay so once we've done that then we can work out from our in this case 235 degrees true we can work that through variation um, to magnetic through deviation to compass to come up with our compass heading if we were looking at applying leeway remember we would apply the leeway first so let's say we had if I pop an arrow coming up okay so let's say this red arrow here was our wind in this instance we would need to angle down into the wind in order to take control of that wind so we'd start with 235 we may well take five degrees away or 10 degrees depending on the wind and how the leeway affects our boat and we would angle down 235 we would take that away to 230 then we would do the calculations through magnetic through to compass uh, but applying the leeway at the beginning. If we want to work out our ETA, we need to work out what our distance to waypoint is, but we would have measured that to start with to work out how long we think this journey is going to take us roughly. Then we work out our speed over ground, remembering that our speed over ground goes from our fix to the point at which our boat speed, our water track here, crosses the ground track. We can do our distance to waypoint divided by speed over ground times by 60, and that gives us our time to go, so our ETA. And we'd be able to say in this instance, I think it was 70 minutes. Uh, now, if we set off at 1900, we would be arriving at around about 10 past eight, so 2010. Okay, so we're, if it was really true, we'd be about here on our journey now at 1940. Okay, so that's a bit of a whistle stop tour of our. Um, course to steer let me just bring poor share go back to a new share um oh i've got a question there just before i do bear with me um as we're going to be short on the waypoint if we can't see the waypoint would we do a recalculation for a new course to steer it's a great question mark in this instance i would say given that we've only got another 10 minutes or so to sail um i would just carry on sailing on a similar course and then i would be looking for the waypoint so i would perhaps then start to monitor on my um my, on my electronic chart um to do a course to steer for what is effectively 10 minutes is quite a lot of calculating for 10 minutes of sailing and if you remember when i talked about things like passage planning it should never take longer to do than it does to sail okay so this would probably take you longer to work out okay but you would roughly come down and as we come down this heading we would be plotting our position. So actually I would perhaps say for half an hour into my journey, I might want to plot my position and I would be able to plot the position to say, well, whereabouts do I end up? Do I end up perhaps north or do I end up south of my line? In which case I might want to stop just adjusting my heading to say well maybe the wind didn't push as much or maybe today the tide didn't quite push as much so if that was the case i might want to just look at changing my heading and again then monitor it say another 30 minutes later okay um any other questions in the chat um or should i go back to the slides let me pop uh, if i pause share go new share that one back up okay so um here are the objectives that we looked at this evening we uh had a quick look at revision of drs and eps converting compass bearings through magnetic and into true and the other way as well following of course the steering including how we would apply leeway calculating an estimated time of arrival and we not uh, we put one in 60 rule on there as well okay let me just uh say before i pick up a couple of questions next sessions then we have got a radar essentials workshop this saturday at 9 30 okay that's going to be covering 
all the basic setup, looking at collision avoidance and also using radar for navigation. Um, and we'll have a look at our radar simulator for that one. Okay, that's one of our paid sessions. You're very welcome to come and join us, all welcome. Particularly if you're looking at working up to a Yacht Master Coastal, Yacht Master Offshore exam, that will cover most of the elements that you would need for that. And next week, it's going to be Tides Week. Okay, so uh, we're going to do tidal hour calculations on Tuesday. So working out the correct hour of tide, including variations for DST. So when we've got um, shaded areas and non-shaded areas, and also second reports on Thursday, everybody's favorite. It's more maths on a Thursday night, I'm afraid, but we'll have a look at how you can calculate secondary reports and how you can work out how to change your hours of tide for those. Okay, so bear with me a second.